So in the last class we had uh, talked about PID control and how it can be used for set point tracking. That is the case when you have a constant reference signal and a constant distance. Uh, so, but this entire exercise that the, the consideration that the reference is constant and also the set point is uh, the disturbance is constant is something that is not very realistic. You, if you are talking about uh, manipulator control, your manipulator uh, set point, the way the target of your manipulator is, is actually a trajectory. And that trajectory is seldom constant. It, you may, in certain uh, special cases, you may have a case where specific points are given. However, it is more uh, often than that, you would have a trajectory uh, as a reference signal. Okay, so I have QD T or theta DT given to me. And I have to generate a control such that this my actual theta m or q follows this reference. Okay. And similarly, the disturbance that we have assumed the disturbance to be the summation of the gravity term and the cross coupling terms in the Coriolis matrix q, q dot. Uh, the cross coupling in the Coriolis uh, force that is being considered as a disturbance. And uh, since Q is a time varying quantity, you can expect this. You can't expect this to again be constant. OK, similarly for the gravity too. Uh, so totally ignoring the time varying nature of this. Is going to be detrimental, so you need to have a control that takes this factor into account, at least to some extent. That is, you need to have a control that takes into account that the reference signal can be time varying and the disturbances can be time varying. OK, so you can. So in this uh, session, in this lecture, we'll be talking about two concepts of our control. That is one is a feed forward control and one is a computer torque control. So in the feed forward control part, you will be handling the niche. You will be compensating. You will design a control that compensates for the time varying nature of a reference assuming that the reference is known a priori so if you have theta d as your reference theta d is known beforehand this function theta d is known beforehand okay and in that case you can generate a control signal that that tries to compensate uh, for this time varying nature of the reference. And the other uh, method of control is a computer torque control, which tries to minimize the nonlinear effect, assuming that you are tracking this reference signal. You are already tracking this reference signal and what is the extra control that is needed to compensate for the nonlinear effort so that you keep on tracking the control. You maintain the tracking. OK, so that is the computer tower control part of it. We will go into both of these concepts one by one. So first we look at the feed forward control. So here what you had is what we had uh, handled uh, in in the last lecture was that this H of S was a PD or a PID controller and this was your linearized uh, manipulator dynamics, so linearized joint dynamics, which was of K by something into J S square plus B S, something of this sort. Okay, and this R was assumed to be a constant signal. OK, now in this uh, lecture, we will start with addition of this F of S, which is the feed forward control part. 
notice that FFS, the signal depends only on what is RFS. It, it doesn't operate on this error at all. Okay, and this uh, this FIFO signal is an approach that can be used to track time varying references. And since it doesn't operate on the feedback, it doesn't require the measurement signal at all. It doesn't require the measurement of Y because let us say, let us uh, take a, a qualitative uh, view on this. See, when will when will this signal H of S, the output of H of S, when will it react to any deviation? So what should happen is there should be some error and because of that, that error propagates in uh, from G of S, it will appear in the it will appear in the output. This output should be compared with the yeah. This should output should be compared with your uh, this output should be compared with your reference signal, and only when that error is realized, you see a change in a corrective action in H of S. So it the feed for feedback path takes into uh, account any error that is happening. However, it is slower. So feedback is a little slower, but it is more uh, reliable. OK, the feed forward path is quick because it doesn't it doesn't require an intervention from the output. It doesn't require a measurement of the output. The feed forward control is a quick control. OK. However, uh, since it doesn't take into account any error, the the compensation for the error for the compensation of error, you need the feedback path also. So both HFS and FFS is needed. Okay. Now, let's see what happens. Okay, what happens to Y and how is it dependent on R when a feed forward control is added to it? So this signal E1 at the first summing point is just R minus Y. E2 is a summation of H times E1 plus uh, F times R. Okay, and Y is G times E2. So if you try to solve this uh, for what what is what was Y by R, you'd get this expression. Okay. You get this expression, you get G times H into F plus 1 plus GH. Okay. Now, what would happen if you if you were to choose F of S as 1 by G of S? So if you choose F of S as 1 by G of S, your Y by R term, your Y by R will turn out to be G H plus G into 1 by G divided by 1 plus GH, this turns out to be 1. Okay, so which would mean that you have perfect tracking due to the application of your feed forward control. Okay, so even if your R of S, of course, if even you know if R of S changes, this F into F of S into R of S is going to be another signal that compensates for the change in R of S that is going to add a corrective signal and try to uh, maintain Y to be equal to R. OK, uh, let's see what. If there is any problem in that. OK, now let us say that if you instead of in, uh, but for now we have only accounted for a change in the control R and we have not we have not yet added the disturbance component of this. Let's, so let's add another disturbance component D of S that is affecting the system. So in our manipulator case, this D of S is the cross coupling terms. So this is the cross coupling term that comes in the manipulator. OK, now let's see that how D of S get will affect Y in presence of this feed forward path. You would see that this feed forward path, if you if you look into, if you just set R equal to zero and try to see what is Y by D, you will get this transfer function G by one plus GH. Okay. And if you add that to your 
already existing signal, you get a tracking error, which is R minus Y to be a function that is dependent on your disturbance alone. OK, so your steady state error is only due to disturbance. This is very similar to what was happening in case of uh, your PD control and even in PID controller. So if the disturbance were constant and you use a PID control with constant disturbance, OK, you will get the steady state error to be equal to zero. OK, so if there was a constant disturbance, the steady state error is zero, but we have to take into account that the disturbance uh, need not be constant. OK, so maybe some other extra component is to be needed to minimize the effect of the disturbance also. OK, but before that, let us look into the how we can apply. Uh, the feed forward uh, control in case of the robotic manipulator control control of the manipulator joint. Okay. So the simplest case was the we had the joint model and the man and the actuator model uh, combined together to get a second order equation K by J S square plus B F P S. And uh, what what we had learned from the feed forward control was that we have to choose the feed forward control to be one by G of S. So if you choose feed forward control to be one by G of S, you get an expression like this. OK, now that would mean that if you have theta D. Okay, then uh, this signal, what what comes at this point? OK, uh, let us say if this is a. Uh, yes, say this is S1. OK, so S1 of T would be equal to J effective by K times the second derivative of theta double dot plus B effective by K into the first derivative of theta double dot. OK, now the question that I want that I'm posing is that isn't this anticipatory? OK, so what we had said is that so the question that I had posed now is that uh, whether uh, this would be because your control now your control that you have here okay is something of the form uh, some constant into second derivative of your uh, desired reference signal plus something into the first derivative of your desired reference signal okay and however in the last class i had told that when you have this derivatives so the first or second derivatives then the control is anticipatory and anticipatory control is not really uh, implementable okay so the question here is that is this actually a practical solution no, when you so because i had just told that anticipatory control will not work then i am proposing a control that is completely anticipatory so what is your view on that. Yeah, so the the change here is that anticipatory control is. Not feasible in case the derivatives taken are for measurement. So the point is that derivatives or time derivatives. Of measured signals is something that you can't guarantee because I don't know how the measured signal is going to evolve in the future. That is something that I can't comment about. So this is not possible. However, time derivative. Uh, sir, yes? uh, what do we mean by measured signals like uh, signals that we can measure in, in some means? So in the sense that in the sense that let us say that uh, you want your let us say you want your uh, some joint to follow a sinusoidal trajectory. Okay, so that is your aim. So I know to I know to take the time derivative of a sine wave. I say that that will be omega cos omega t. There is no problem with that. However, I don't know if the joint is going to follow that trajectory. May, maybe it is possible that I have got a wrong model. 
okay so if i apply this signal i don't know if the if the joint is it will exactly follow that trajectory the only way that i can uh, even verify it is to actually measure using some uh, uh, what do you call some sensor i have to measure the actual joint angle okay so i will be able to measure the joint angle now i will have history of what was the joint angle in the past but i have no idea what will be the joint angle in the future okay is that uh, clear yes sir yeah so so if for, since i don't know what will be the future of a measured signal of a, or of a signal that i have to measure i cannot rely on having d by dt of any measured signal that being an integral part of my control even if it looks like that the controller structure should be in a manner that i don't i would not need to use the time derivative of any measured signal okay however it is for reference signal it is okay because reference signal is something that i desire to have so if i say that i want it to follow a step a step signal then i can compute the time derivative of a step signal like i do in some mathematics course on mathematics i will compute the time derivative of a signal of any mathematical signal and apply and say that this is my d by dt of my reference that is well and good so this thing is okay f of s can be in this manner however if i had choose a if i choose a pd controller for my feedback compensator the pd controller is not of the structure the pd controller has this denominator to make make it a practical pd controller okay so that's the way that's that's the structural difference that would have that you would have between the feed feed, feed forward control and the feedback control okay now this is the control that you are applying into your system so if you combine the feedback part and the feed forward part uh, so this is the feed forward control this is the feedback control that you have okay and if you add both of them together if you add both of them together you get a controller structure like this means the control structure like this and now if you see the forward equation if you go back okay this was whatever was here okay at the relationship with what 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 was the signal here and what was the signal here is given as uh, by this equation so j effective times theta m double dot plus b effective theta m will be this uh, signal that is the input signal and uh, if you write it out and if you say error is theta m d minus theta m you get you find that the dynamics of the error is dependent on what was the disturbance alone this was again this is again similar to the case that we had in the in the case of the pid controller and again this will become this will be trivial in the case when you have when if you apply like if you apply pid controller with d being constant there is no problem even now okay however what has been uh, the first problem that has been solved is that now the reference need not be i can track any reference that changes with time but if the disturbance changes with time then i'll have an error that is proportional to the magnitude of the disturbance or yeah that it will be proportional to the magnitude of the disturbance that you will that you will have here uh, and uh, as long as j effective this expression and this expression all of them are positive the dynamic is stable so you would if you see the error the error may start from some value if you say e of t versus t error will start from some value and it will go into some band this band is dependent upon the magnitude of rd of t okay 
However, now now let's go back to what we had considered as D of T in the earlier case. Uh, so this was it, it comes to the same thing. So do you had we had considered that this was this term, this entire term was J effective, that is accounted for. This entire term was B effective, that also we had accounted for. And initially we had taken whatever was in red as D of T. Okay. And this, these are effects that we had uh, that were part of the uh, dynamics of your uh, manipulator model itself, the joint model itself, that were actually ignored and clubbed as a disturbance. Okay. Now let us add one more term. These are external factors. Okay. Maybe there is some something, some some uh, say play in the gear. There, there maybe there is some measurement error or not not no measurement error. There there are there is some external factor, some disturbance, some extra disturbance that is affecting the system that is not actually accounted for by the model itself. Let's say that is the psi. Okay, so these are external disturbances that are affecting. We don't know how it, we we have no way to uh, even model how it is affecting the system. So so there is a minor effect of this. Okay, that affects how the manipulator is moving, how the manipulator joint is moving, but I don't have any model for it. Only have is that it is of a small magnitude. Okay, there is a small magnitude disturbance that is affecting, which is external. Okay, and this D of K, as we said, is equivalent to what the cross coupling effects and the gravity term that is added. Okay. Uh, now what we are doing is that uh, we have this uh, uh, we have this term as uh, psi k, which is the external disturbance, which is much less magnitude than the uh, cross coupling term d k, and we use the a computer torque, which would be this d k. Assuming that Q is equal to Q desired. Okay. Assuming that the manipulator is following the trajectory, there would have been some value for this error. That means this uh, cross coupling terms. Okay. And that is taken out, that is computed as your DD. Okay. And that is the computer torque. Uh, signal. It is that signal that will ensure that the motor angle remains on the desired trajectory. Okay. Now, if you write it in this manner, so instead of so you had a disturbance uh, term here. Okay. Now that disturbance term need not be taken at all because here you have you don't have this J effective. You have actually the manipulator. Okay. So in the manipulator dynamics, you had this D K and that is compensated with this D D K. Now, if you take both of them together, effectively you end up with an equation in which uh, the right hand side, instead of being dependent on the entire D plus Psi is now only dependent on Psi. And as we had uh, taken earlier, this term psi is has a much lesser magnitude. The external disturbance factor has much less magnitude than the cross coupling terms. OK, uh, however, this assumes that you have a good enough model. So you have an expression. What was C Q comma Q dot? OK, you have an expression was what was G of Q? So the gravity, the how the gravity is affecting the manipulator and how the cross coupling terms are affecting the manipulator that should be known. If that is known, then the computer torque control can be computed. If that is not really known, then the computer torque cannot be computed and the error that you have will be proportional to all these terms put together. Okay, so this uh, was the short lecture that I had for today.
and uh, thank you for it so if